All right. Hey, folks, James Sowers, Director of Marketing at The Good here. We are a conversion rate optimization firm that serves e-commerce brands. And one of our team members uh, in Slack this morning said, I love this product detail page for Laundry Soap brought to you by Thrive Market. So, of course, I thought I had to jump in there and see what all the hype was about, but also see if there are a few additional areas of opportunity that they might be able to make this thing even better. So uh, let's jump right in. This is from a company called Thrive Market. I vaguely know the brand, but uh, I'm not a customer or anything like that. It does appear like it is a membership-based organization, so there might be some nuances to our review here today that impact some of the recommendations. But let's take a look at what, we, uh, what we've got going on here. So this is for laundry soap. The scent is frankincense and myrrh. And at first glance, um, I would say that this thing looks pretty clean. There's a lot of white space, a lot of breathing room. Uh, I love that they've got the reviews listed up top here um, with the number 267 next to it. Maybe there's the opportunity to put in uh, put reviews there in the, the words you actually know. It's fairly intuitive these days, but uh, that might clear things up a little bit more. I don't know what the options option here is doing here. It kind of looks like a button, looks like something I should be able to click on, but as you can see, I'm doing that and nothing is happening. Um, so not really sure what value that's adding, but maybe that's an aspect of the membership or something that I just don't have full context on. Uh, in the absence of more information, I'd say that could be removed. And then you could add the word reviews here without cluttering the page and we know exactly what those stars uh, mean. So then let's go down a little bit farther. Um, interesting to see only a single product photo here. That's probably okay for a consumable good like this. I mean, I think it's laundry soap, so people get it. Um, but there might be some value in showing this next to another common household item so I can get a feel for how big it is. That gives me a sense of the shipping weight, how much space I need to store it in my house. And it's a rough approximation of how long it's going to last me, right? Do I need to order one of these or two of these? And there's some other information there that gives me uh, a best, an educated guess on that. And we'll get into that uh, next, I suppose, because I'm seeing it here under the product name. We've got 32 loads and then 36 cents per load. And um, I think that was called out by uh, my coworkers. Shout out to Samita about as, as kind of a, a plus for the page. To me, it kind of raises more questions than answers. Like, I don't know if 36 cents a load is good. I mean, I, I guess. So I can roughly figure out how many loads of laundry I do a month and what that's going to cost me. The 32 loads uh, total is a much better estimate of how long this is going to last me. And as somebody who, uh, you know, I don't transparently, I don't do the laundry in our house. I leave that up to my wife, but I see how much she does. And I know that 32 loads with a couple of kids isn't going to last us all that long. I'd go ahead and order two of these. But if you're going to list the price out, you know, I've seen this in uh, a use case for this in automobiles where it's like the total cost of ownership, right? And they factor in like maintenance and uh, fuel and things like that. And they say, well, it's cheaper to own a Toyota than a Ford, for example, or it's cheaper to own a Toyota Camry versus a Toyota Tundra. So I think that's really smart, but I'm finding myself like, I don't have any frame of reference if like 36 cents a load is way cheaper than Tide or if it's way more expensive or if it's pretty much on par, but the ultimate um, price here is lower than what Tide would be. So I feel like that's just a little bit incomplete for me. And if you had some kind of reference there where it's like um, save 10 cents a load over Tide, that makes more sense to me. Or uh, total monthly expense of $6. It's like, okay, I can do all of my laundry for an entire month for the average family for six bucks. Like I get that. that that's the frame of reference I'm looking for there. Um, let's look at pricing. So um, I think this is a good pricing layout. I love that they went with 12% off here because as a dollar amount, it's really not a huge number. So typically I advocate for whichever is larger and more impressive between a percent savings and a dollar savings. And I think in this case, 12% sounds way more compelling than a few cents. Um, I think the layout in general is it has all the right components. So it's got the current price. It has the original price with a strike through, and then it has the savings. That's all kind of the best practices we recommend or that we like to see that tend to win uh, tests. And then this little info block here is going to give me a little spiel about um, how to consume this information, right? Uh, they were saying it compares to the brand's suggested retail price, or if it's a Thrive Market in-house item, then it's uh, compared to the price of a suggested like brand from the popular market. So in this case, it might be Tide or something like that. Um, I don't know. This just seems like a lot of information. It also has a disclaimer about how these prices might not be the price in your area. So if you live in California versus Oklahoma or something like that, they might be a little bit different. Um, I could see why they'd want to put this here. I don't know. It kind of seems like a distraction to me. I think people are either happy with the price or they're not. And uh I don't know a lot about Thrive Market. Like, I don't know if I could physically have this shipped to my door. Maybe it's just you add it to your cart, you buy it, and then you go pick it up at a physical location, in which case, like, 
this price might not be the same price you see on your receipt. But it just feels like with the technology we have today, like this could be localized based on where I'm shopping from and we wouldn't need the extra information call out here. Uh, let's see, then we've got add to cart. That's pretty straightforward. We'll check out uh, exactly how that functions in a little bit. And then we've got this favorite item here. Uh, I'm guessing that's probably not gonna work unless I have a membership, so I won't click that for now. Ships within 24 hours, I think that's really smart. A lot of folks are gonna say, all right, uh, I need laundry soap like yesterday and I can't do laundry without it, so when will I get it? And so um, when it will ship is a great promise. When it will arrive would be an even better promise if you have the ability to do that. And I think if you click learn more here, it talks about how different products ship at different rates and how long it takes to get to you and things that need to be refrigerated or you know signed for at the door like wine, that kind of thing. I think this is smart to include there. Again, my feedback would be uh, if you can estimate when it will arrive even, that would be one step farther. But the next best thing is letting me know that it'll be out the door in 24 hours. So it's reasonable to expect that if I'm relatively close to you, I'll get it within a couple of days, right? Or by the end of the week. And then I know that it was called out that um, the values section here is a, a great play. I would agree with that. So it looks like the values that this product embodies are the use of essential oils, the absence of sulfites or sulfur dioxide, and uh, it's free of parabens. I know if you click these, it will take you to a category page with other products that meet the same criteria, which I think is super smart. So it's like, okay, I know that um, I'm against, or I like to use essential oils. So what other products does this company sell or this market sell? Um, that also have essential oils. You've got pure essential oils here, but then you probably have things like wipes and floss and stuff like that. So I think this is really smart as a way to increase average order value. Uh, let me see. I think I right clicked on that one. So if I left click, it actually takes me away from the product. I would say if you can force those to open in a new tab, that would be best because I might still want to buy this and I might not have added it to my cart yet, but I might also be interested in exploring some of these other areas. So I wouldn't want to lose the sale of the laundry soap because somebody got curious about these options. I would open that in a new tab and let them shop, you know, in parallel when they're ready. Um, this is interesting. So other options listed out as images and text here is a little interesting because normally I would see a drop down here with like fragrance or sometimes in food, you'll see flavor In apparel. You might see a color swatch or something like that. Yeah, I don't know that I'm against this, but I would definitely test like um, this layout here that they have versus having a drop down up somewhere in this area where you could choose your scent and then it would swap out the product photo or something like that. Um, that would be a test that I would run for sure. I don't know if this is holding them back at all, but I'd be curious to see if you, um, you know, which, which products you sell more of, if you give somebody that drop down option up higher on the page, or if you can sell multiples, like, is it faster for me to add a frankincense and myrrh Go up to the drop down, select patchouli, add that as well versus let me click on this. Okay, it takes me away. It doesn't open a new tab. So I have to add this and I have to go back and I have to add the frankincense and myrrh I was originally on. You know, there's a little bit of friction there for me. Um, so I'd love to see that run as a test. What else? Members also bought. So we've got uh, recommendations here. Same kind of clean laundry soap is in there. So these two things are repeated down below. You know, it's okay, I guess, but it's it's not ideal to have those be so repetitive. I do think if you had the fragrance drop down up higher, there'd be enough physical distance between that and this, and it would be presented in a different way. You wouldn't see like four or identical images right close to each other like this. It would be a drop down text based orientation up higher, and then you'd have the image down below. But I think it's smart to have things like dryer balls and um, hand soap and other detergents kind of paired together. I think that's smart. It does feel a little tight, like vertic uh, the vertical spacing here. It does feel like you could use some more uh, margin above and below this section and maybe even put this in some kind of a, a call out box or something like that to draw attention to it because this is what's gonna increase your total cart value. Um, so I think there is some area for improvement here. Generally, I think these carousel navigation items get overlooked, especially when they're small and tucked away in a corner like this. Um, I'd be curious to see what that looks like on mobile. So what I would do instead is maybe um, just have like two rows of five and not have any kind of navigational element to it and just leave it at that or even just keep it to five. That's that's a test that you can run. Uh, let's see. I would also encourage some consistency in the CTA buttons here. So we've got tan add to cart buttons down here with a little bit of a hover effect, but up higher we had this bright orange, which really attracts your attention. Tan is something that I've been cognitively conditioned to um, pair with this like values uh, I guess pill shaped item here. So 
all those things are kind of making me think more than I should have to. So I would just say anything that is transactional or commercial, just make it the same color. So you've got this orange button here. You've got this orange claim your free gift. You've got this orange checkout. All those things are tied to money or some kind of monetary value for Thrive Market. So I would just carry that standard on down through to this members also bought uh, section here. And then let's see, moving right along, we got this section here about what's inside and that's got ingredients. Um, you know, I think this is fine. I think there's a lot to be desired here in terms of like making this information something that's easy for me to digest and understand. At the very least, like put this in a bulleted list so it's easier for me to visually separate those things. And, you know, I'm probably looking for certain keywords here. Like I want to know if it does or does not have a specific thing. Like we learned earlier, essential oils, a lot of people value that. Um, you know, I would want to know if it, it has coconut oil in it or something like that, or I want to make sure it doesn't have some kind of synthetic compound in it. Much easier to digest this with a bulleted list or, um, you know, icons or, or something like that. And, um, let's see what else, why you love it. So What's interesting to me is the way that this is structured. You've got reviews, why you love it, and what's inside. They're set up like tabs, which, you know, in a, in a traditional sense would basically swap out this body copy right here and would replace it with new content. But in this case, it's doing a jump scroll. So as someone who looks at websites day in and day out, maybe that's more confusing for me than the average person, but I was kind of expecting this to be kind of like a tabbed, um, almost like an accordion style section where like this content would get replaced by new content and it wouldn't navigate me farther down the page. Um, but let's just agree that that is, you know, maybe superficial, but I, I think that could be an improved user experience there. And I would just, um, instead of having this navigational item, I would just have dedicated sections to each of these. Um, interesting about the ingredients is like you could also use, I'm sure on this bottle somewhere, there's an ingredient label on the back. So something like that, you know, you would see that with a food product. I know this is a little different, but just a, an image of the layout or of the label and then um, text kind of describing or listing out in easier to read, like a bigger font, um, what ingredients are, or just calling out some of the key ingredients. Uh, let's see. So this is the why you'll love it section. To me, this feels like something where the brand would really appreciate you like giving that a little bit more polish. This is a big block of text that um, I would be surprised if anybody reads. And if we go through it, uh, I bet there's a lot of good material in here. So like it says, um, this isn't the D word, detergent, right? Um, it doesn't have nasty chemicals in it. You know, this is a little bit of personality to, that I think Zoom as a brand would really appreciate, you know, um, having more visual attention drawn to it. And I think there are ways to do that through layout. You could bring the brand up here. Um, you know, some of the other things I'm seeing in here is, let's see. We use coconut oil soap to clean and lift stains, baking soda to remove odors, essential oils for a scent that is a perfect ending. And then we have no parabens, phosphates, uh, whatever that uh, chemical is, and we're sulfates. Like, these are all value propositions that, like, in a giant, wall of text like this are going to be totally lost to most visitors. But if it was a lockup, uh, similar to this members also bought, if it was like a three by three set of icons with single phrases under them. So if it was just like, um, you know, no parabens with kind of like a no smoking symbol, you know, the, the circle with the strike through over it, uh, no phosphates or sulfates, that kind of thing, uh, low sudsing. So could it have just like a tiny little bit of bubbles or something like that, highly concentrated. Um, you could have some kind of visual representation of getting a lot of impact out of a little bit of liquid. And um, yeah, there's just, there's just some stuff here that I think could be presented visually and would make it, it, it would get it more attention, which is probably going to drive more sales, but also just make it easier for the user to consume and interpret that information. Some other things that are jumping out at me are, when you talk about the ingredients up here, it's like, okay, we list out that there's coconut oil in it. We list out that there's baking soda and fragrances, but like, tell me, tell me why I should care about that, right? Like coconut oil cleans and lifts stains. Okay, perfect. So let's bring that up here and say, uh, potassium and cocoa uh, to lift oil and stains, potassium bicarbonate, AKA baking soda to whatever it said it did, uh, remove odors, right? So that's the value. That's, that's why I'll love it. But when it's buried in a big wall of text like this, I'm not getting any of that. I'm going to keep scrolling. I'm going to go find something else, whatever. Um, and the last thing I'll call out here is that it says cleans 32 loads in high efficiency machines. So I'm wondering, again, as somebody who doesn't do the laundry in my house, like 
you know, how many households have high efficient efficiency machines? Like I know if you buy a new one within the last five years, there's probably a pretty good chance that it's a high efficiency machine, but I'm sure there are plenty and probably millions of houses out there that don't have high efficiency machines. So how many loads do I get out of this in a, a an older machine that maybe isn't as efficient? And how does that impact this number that we saw up above about the cost per load, how long this is going to last me, that kind of thing. So um, there might be an opportunity here to bust some objections and say something like, hey, you'll get 32 loads out of this in high efficiency machines. If you have a traditional machine, you can expect something like 16, but maybe it's still more affordable or maybe it still works better than Tide, so it's worth the extra expense and replacing it more. Um, that's just a little kind of caveat that I noticed that I would want to know as a consumer. Um, and then we're going to repeat the values. This is fine. Again, I, I think I would try to find some kind of visual representation of what it means to include essential oils and not have sulfites, not have parabens. Um, maybe even say, maybe even have an icon on the left-hand side and then a little bit of uh, text description here. It says like, uh, why are in, having essential oils, why is that a good thing? Why is not having sulfites a good thing? Why is buying paraben-free products a good thing? You know, if people see this and identify with this, they probably already have those answers, but there are new people every day who are learning what it means to have paraben-free products, and you can be part of that experience. So um, that feels reasonable to me. Okay, cool. Let's move down into the review section. I think this is a lot of ratings and a lot of reviews for a product like this, so that's good to see. Uh, 4.6 out of 5, you know, that feels credible. I hate when I see 5 out of 5 across hundreds of reviews because inevitably you're going to have somebody come in and leave a one-star review, have a bad experience, whether that's as simple as like it showed up, the box was wet because it rained and that's really like the postal service's fault, but it gave me a negative experience with the product. So I came to complain about it. Like those things are going to happen. So anytime I see a pure five out of five across hundreds or thousands of reviews, I immediately get skeptical and I'm going somewhere else to like verify that this is actually a good product because that kind of feels like maybe it was a pay to play thing or there's some kind of incentive misalignment there. Uh, because look, we're not perfect. Everybody has room for improvement, right? Um, so then let's see, sorted by most recent, verified purchase. That's probably easy to do if this is a membership-based organization. Uh, that's cool. You know, I would test like the sorting. Most recent is one way to do it. Most helpful, lowest rated, highest rated. I think like the general advice that I see around reviews a lot is, as a consumer is like take the all the five-star reviews, throw them out. Take all the one-star reviews, throw them out. Uh, those people tend to be, you know, advocates for everything they buy or uh, detractors for everything they buy. So really you want to look at those three star reviews. Those tend to be uh, the most honest ones. So it looks like I can go ahead and filter this way. So that's what I would do. And, um, you know, I would think that like there might be an opportunity here to manually pull out some of the most compelling ones or a balanced approach and put that in a row of three up top. If you can get somebody's photo, that'd be great. Or a photo of them using the product, that'd be even better. And just have a kind of a custom uh, lockup across the top here that's three columns and it's three really good testimonials where you take something that's long like this and um, you just pull a single sentence or something that like a sound bite that's really appealing and put that up there and that's that might be all I need I might not have to dig farther if I just see three really strong ones up top here um, that could be good and then I would also love to see some kind of uh, some kind of commercial call to action here. Like if I get down this far and I'm looking at reviews and I decide that like, okay, this one pushed me over the edge. How do I buy? Right. How do I, how do I go find this and buy this product? Um, I'd have to go all the way back up to the top, I think, because this is the only add to cart button I've seen so far. So, um, unless I miss something that feels like an opportunity there to get a commercial link down in here somewhere. And then we're going to end with members also viewed. We kind of commented on that. And we've got the footer down here, so I won't get uh, too much into the footer. Although interesting to see there are B Corporation. We are too. So uh, shout out to all B Corporations around the world. Uh, okay, if I minimize that CT, I was going to say I thought I missed that. So this sticky add to cart here at the very bottom is smart. And that seems like that would address my uh, recommendation from before. So uh, so yeah, that's my, my thoughts on the um, product detail page for Zoom Clean Laundry Soap, Frankincense and Myrrh fragrance. And, uh, you know, hopefully there are a few nuggets of wisdom in there that are informational for you and your brand. If you have any questions or observations, or if you see something that I missed, feel free to let me know. All right. We'll talk to you soon.